it looks like Falls is getting ready for the Nether Hub. And this is exciting because I really want that Nether Hub built so we're not just walking around in random tunnels. So she's got like a, a, a donation area set up here. So she needs warped stems. Got it. Quartz. Got it. Nether brick. Got it. So I can help out quite a bit here. I think she needs a lot of chains and stuff. So there's quite a bit of quartz already donated, but I mean, obviously I have tons of that. I could get, oh wow, she's got a lot of nether brick already. But the warp stems is what she needs the most of, and I probably have one of the best farms on the server for that, I think. I don't know who else has made one yet. But we're definitely going to see what we can do to help out. So I talked to False, and it turns out she's actually got most of what she needs already, but she needs a lot of warp stem. So I went to... Oh, that's not bad. I went to the uh, my tree farm over there, and uh, I cleaned that out, and we're going to clean the shop out, and we're going to donate what we can to the nether cause. She needs a lot of warp stem. I'm going to have to get some more for her. So not bad. We're adding about 1,200 warp stem here. How much? Yeah, all right. There's already a good start there, but... Or at least doubling, I think, because these are probably all empty. Bomp, 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 bomp. Yeah, empty. So, she's looking good. She's got most of what she needs, and I'm going to try to get more warp stem soon. Decked out, you guys. Oh, the reception you guys said on my on my last video with, with the design of the game we're working on here. I want to thank you guys so much. I am so excited to continue working on this. Let's go. Decked out. This game is going to be great, okay? I've done a little bit of work on the live streams okay let me show you what we're doing here up here okay good i've started to lay out the floor like the floor of the dungeon uh but here's the thing this it's all it's all getting thrown out i'm tearing this all down because i don't like it and i have better plans i just spent about five hours last night and this morning redesigning my own dungeon from scratch that that fits the needs I want. But what I did here is what I want to do again to start this episode. You see, I just like laid out the map, basically the floorboards, a little bit of stair changes and stuff like that. I want to do that just to kind of get a sense of what the map feels like in Minecraft instead of in Photoshop, all right? I want to actually lay it out here. Um, but first, we have to tear this out. Poof, gone. It's all gone. We're ready. We have a clean slate ready to build here. We're going to make a lot of progress. I haven't I haven't gotten rid of that little sample area yet, just in case, but that'll probably go very soon. But I want to show you something else, though. Um, well, first of all, I made a mistake. I made lots of mistakes. I made a mistake last episode. I thought I was originally going to have the dungeon start right here. But then I realized this isn't the dungeon floor. The dungeon floor needs to be up higher. So I got room for all the redstone down below and everything. So I raised it up there. And now, like, everything here, this is this is garbage. This is, this is all garbage right here. So hang on a second. And bam, something like that. All right, so... We have this room here, and instead, there's going to be a room here that kind of goes step, 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 up here. So that's how we gain our little height. And then the entrance to the dungeon is going to be right here at about this level. And the dungeon's going to have, you know, like, all kinds of little stairs up, stairs down and stuff. We're not going to have multiple floors, but we'll definitely have a lot of little height changes here and there. And I did a little bit of work here in the main hall where all the players' scoreboards are going to be, and I like it. I really like <laughs> Look at that. You can see there's like a rendering glitch there. That's not that's not see through. I can see my iron shop out there, and then you back up. Oh no, closed off. Very weird. Um, but yeah, this is the this is the scoreboard here that I'm I'm leaning toward. I'm I'm pretty pretty solid. This is gonna be it. Blackstone with the little steps up, the altering height, um, soul lanterns and stuff. Pretty nice. And I really like the the crying obsidian behind the twelve uh, item frames. I think that's a really nice look. I left this one here as like an alternate example. I'm still not sure. I don't really like it. I think I like the crying, the, the crying obsidian a lot better, but this is looking good. Now, we obviously have a lot more to do in here. I really want to make this room look good. We did a little bit on this side, too. Not done yet, but we're getting there. Okay, so before we get into the crazy fast time lapse here where I lay out the entire map, I want to give you guys a little bit of overview of my thoughts of this dungeon here, okay? It's going to be broken up into, like, quadrants, all right? So, four major areas, I would say, with a couple little exceptions of common area and stuff like that. But the uh, this quadrant right here, this front right one, however, is going to be what I'm calling the keep. And that is going to be, like, your stone brick. It's your castle. It's your it's kind of the, the civilized area of the dungeon, if you will. It'll be, like, a treasury room, a throne room, uh, a bed barracks, a, a cell block, a, a library, things like that, okay? The back corner over there where we have the 
the two spawners. That's going to be the, the nature section or the forest section. My idea there is it's going to almost feel like outside. Okay. There's going to be like a lake and a cemetery and a mountain and a tower and an icy area and stuff like that. And the idea is it's all covered by like tree canopy and stuff. Maybe a little bit of blue in the sky for a sky or something, but we'll see. Uh, back left over there. I can't really have, a, really have a name for that section yet, but that's going to be all blackstone. And uh, well, let's just say there's a lot of, a lot of evil things back there. A lot of dungeony things in the back there. And the front left corner here, this is going to be the nether section, okay? So all kinds of nethery things, nether traps with like lava and stuff. There's going to be like a big crimson forest and a warped forest and stuff like that. All kinds of interesting things there. And there's going to be like little connectors between each section, a main entryway right here, and then a very interesting common area in the middle there. That is the dungeon, or at least half of it. Well, more than half of it. It's all of it except this whole section. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but there we go. I am so pleased with how this turned out. By the way, Hermits, if you're watching, that would be a good time for you to not watch. Spoilers. We're going to give a little tour of the dungeon. Now, I'm going to go through the quadrants here real quick and tell you what the plans are for each area without going into too much detail. All right, so you enter the dungeon right here. Now, this first area here is kind of just the entryway. It's narrow. I don't consider this to be part of the keep, even though it has the stone like kind of tile set and, and pallet. Um, the keep actually starts over there, okay? You'll see there is one little section right there. There's some staircases to get you into the keep there. And there is a left way over here that turns left quickly and goes into the nether quadrant over there. But for the most part, this center area is basically just to direct you toward the middle of the dungeon by, you know, back by the beacon. It kind of splits. One goes high, one goes low. This is all going to be, you know, obviously the walls are down now. Um, I'm, I'm actually thinking, like, I want to leave the walls down for quite some time, I think, just because it's going to make, like, working on this and navigating it so much easier. But you, we're definitely going to, like, decorate all these things and everything and put, you know, full decorations everywhere here. But the idea now is the center area comes up and splits into this area here. Now, this is the center area right where this black stone starts. So it's like, it's like here... Over there, obviously, is the entrance to the forest area, and then the starting, like, back there, it goes into, like, the dark area and stuff, as I'm calling it. But this area right here, like, these ten blocks right around the beacon, I, I think it's going to be interesting. What I want to do is add a pool of lava underneath the whole thing, and these bridges here that kind of intertwine and go underneath each other, I'm going to have them, like, suspended and hanging from chains from the ceiling with, like, 
like drips of lava coming down. So I want this to feel super dangerous here. I don't know whether I'll put uh, ledges on this or not. Probably not. You know, if you want to fall off, be my guest. So this first quadrant here is the keep or the castle or whatever. Like I said, it's the kind of the civilized area. Down here, this is going to be a library with bookshelves. There's going to be like some lecterns and stuff like that, where if the uh, if the hermits actually take the time to read through the lecterns, they will find some interesting little, uh, little secrets about the dungeon, shall we say. Oh, I forgot to connect this, I think. Yeah, this has got to connect over there or something. I don't know. Anyways, there's going to be like an apothecary, a little a little small blacksmith. Uh, down here is going to be your, your kind of your uh, prison cells, your cell block area down there. Uh, and then up here you enter and this is going to be a throne room. So like big archways and stuff with like an actual throne, probably like right here, the King's quarters back there, maybe, maybe a treasure room back there. Who can say? Who can say? Now the forest area is definitely the most unique. It is open. There's not a lot of tiny corridors and stuff. The idea now is that there will be tree canopy covering 90% of this, like I said. But this is also the quadrant that has the two spawners, so there is extra threat here, okay? So this first area right here, this is going to be a crypt, or a, not a crypt, a, uh, a cemetery or a graveyard, okay? So we'll have all kinds of graves here. Obviously it won't be happy, you know, fuzzy grass here. It's going to be much more desolate and stuff, and the idea is that you're going to have to go, there's going to be like a little column that, you know, you can't see the spawner, so you won't be aware it's there, but you're going to have to walk around it and everything to get up this, which leads you to a, you know, kind of like a back, uh, a little backside entrance into like a foresty area. So here's going to be like beehives and oak trees and, and things like that. A little bit more cozy in here, but obviously a big open area where, you know, the ravagers could be. This is the desert, well, I should say right here, this is going to be a well, okay, a well that you might want to, you know, you might want to jump into it, that's all I'm going to say. There's going to be a desert right here that will have a trap, I won't reveal what that will be, opening into a lake area over here. So this open area is going to be all water, and I'm going to make a lake down there that, uh, that you could go swimming in, you know, if you want, that's all I'm going to say. And then over here, this room is going to be interesting, okay, you'll see a high, high skeleton, yeah, yeah, you were, oh, where's my sword? Sword! Okay, this room is going to be interesting because the real way in or the only way into this room is right here And you can see we have the the the, the spawner up there Okay, the I'm gonna collect the skeletons and drop them into like a tower here Okay, and this tower will be like, you know, like maybe that tall ish or something That'll be like where they're standing on that height So they'll spawn in like a ceiling area fall through onto that. I should eat some food um, and the idea now is you want to get up top there. That's the icy mountain tundra area, okay? And it's going to be like a ramp here, ramp up, and ramp around. So you have to loop around the tower while the skeletons are shooting at you. And if you survive that and make it up here, this will be a mountain area. I mean, I know it's not big, but the theme will be here. This will all be snow and everything. I'll probably put like a snowman up here. And, you know, this would definitely be a prime location to hide uh, hide some lodestones and things like that. In the back left is the dark quadrant, as I'm tentatively calling it. Now, I don't have, I have some specific plans here that I don't really want to give away too much. There's going to be some more traps in here and some interesting rooms. The main thing about this one, though, is this right here, which I'm calling the, the path of the bold, I guess, is a straight shot to get into that back corner. The back corner is very important. I'll talk about that in a second. So you could take this path right here. It just goes doom, doom, straight into the back there. But this is going to be super filled with stealth plate detectors. So it's a, it's kind of another risk versus reward thing. Like you could take it if you want. And if your stealth is high, it probably is a good idea. But if if it's not, you're going to generate a lot of clank going through here to get, to get to that back area. The back area, by the way, and I'm not going to go through all these rooms here. I do have plans for almost all of them, though. There's my secret path passages and all kinds of stuff back here but this room back here is the chamber of souls and i don't know if i i don't think i even talked about the uh I don't think I talked about the, the soul flames. Yeah, I had to go back through my last episode to see if I even talked about the soul flame stuff, and I didn't because it was getting too complicated, but we're going to talk about that now. But did you guys notice, like, listen... The new sound effects, I cannot... I, I just cannot say enough good things about the sound effects in 116, like... When I walk on Soul Sand, I don't know if you can hear it. You hear like little like arr, arr, like souls. Watch, watch, listen, watch. You probably can't even hear it. Anyway, yeah, the souls are talking to me. At least, at least I think they are, or I'm going crazy. But, but anyways, this is the Chamber of Souls. Okay, Soul Flames 
are very important to this game, okay? Not only is your is your job or your goal to come in here into the dungeon and find the lodestone and get as much loot and get out without getting your face eaten by a ravager, the goal is also to find these soul flames, and they will be sprinkled all throughout the dungeon. There's gonna be like maybe 20 of them or so, okay? But there's gonna be a much higher concentration back here in this room, okay? So you're, all you gotta do is come over, find them. They're gonna be like, you know, let's see here, let me do a little block action here. A little something like this, something like that, maybe something like that, right? They're gonna be kind of hidden in the walls, and you're just like, ooh, soul flame. And you can just give a little, uh, little punch action, and boom, you've extinguished a soul flame. Now, if you make it out alive, the more soul flames that you extinguished during that run will increase. I feel like I've covered this. Maybe it was in the live stream. I'm getting it all confused. I don't know. But the more soul flames you punch out, the more, or I should say, the better the reward will be for your cards when you're done. So if you punch out just like one soul flame or zero, you're going to come out here and it's going to be like, yeah, there's a loot. Loot Hunter 1 and a, and a Stealth 1, maybe if you're lucky. But if you punch out like 8, 9, 10 Soul Flames and you come out here, you're be like, well, hello there, Stealth 3 and Beast Finder 4, like that kind of thing, okay? So you're heavily incentivized to find as many of those Soul Flames as you can and punch them out. And then back to the dark area over here, this area back here, like I said, will have a high concentration of these Soul Flames. So no matter where your lodestone's pointing, you're always in the back of your head going to be like, maybe I should go into that Chamber of Souls and maybe because there'll probably be like four or five Soul Flames in the back there that I could punch out for easy win which gets me back to this path here okay this is the path of the bold a lot of the rooms i'm going to have names for and stuff mostly to give it a little bit more lore a little bit more character but also so that the hermits can start talking about it like hey have you found the rose garden yet over there no i haven't what's that like that kind of thing but anyways, if they want to take the risk and come down here and take the expedited route in, they can, but clankety clankety clank all along this path, very bad. But in here, right, obviously they're not going to have soul speed boots, they're not going to be zipping around, and there's going to be maybe some traps in here, there's going to be some walls and some caves to explore, stuff like that, so I think it'll be interesting. And the final area is the nether area. It looks incomplete, but that's because there's two massive sections that are missing. Down here, I'm going to have a big war warped forest in that corner and there are a crimson forest over there and a warped forest there okay now you'll see there's gonna be like up here there's gonna be like all kinds of traps with lava and fire charges and stuff like that that's gonna burn and their face there's gonna be over there is gonna be the rose garden which i was talking about i'm gonna give you one guess what kind of roses are gonna be over there and then you'll notice these two paths right there that path and this path are two main kind of like arteries into the warp forest and the warp forest and the crimson forest are where there's going to be like a lot of lodestones hidden i believe so that's the rough that's the rough dungeon plan right now again it's hard to imagine without walls and stuff but you can see it's I'm pretty happy with the size and complexity of this thing. This is pretty exciting. Okay, enough of the map for today. There's something else I want to show you that I think you guys will like, and I'm real happy with. I've changed the artifacts from the simple just like color things, you know, the banners and the blocks and stuff, to this, okay? We have much more themed uh, artifact sets now, for instance, and they're all named and themed together. So, for instance, this is every one of the, it's like four across here is a set. So, there's six sets here. You can see this first set is the dragon set. So the unique is the dragon head. This will be a uh, dragon breath potion. We have the uh, ender crystal and the obsidian. All things related to the dragon fight. And again, these are all from uh, rare to, or not rare, uh, unique, rare, uncommon, common, based on, and the numbers you can see are the tentative numbers I'm going with in terms of distribution, so one, two, there'll be four of the uncommon and eight of the common, which which gives us that rarity, but we have a, a wither set, we have a ocean set, I'm just going to gloss over these real quick, but you guys can see we have an end set with the shulker head as the unique and everything, we have the nether set, arcanite, or arcanite, ancient debris, we have all the, all the goody goodies here from the nether, and then we have the a shiny set which is just blocks of gems and stuff and i can tell you that there will be more than six sets i'm i will need more i'll probably need to add another three to four sets at least and again this is going to depend on how many hermits are playing i will introduce new sets based on how many hermits are playing because that will uh, determine how balanced the game is and stuff like i don't want to have 
I don't want to have six sets and 20 hermits playing. That would be weird. I wouldn't be competing over the same set. It would get really awkward. Hmm. Okay, so I'm thinking about some of the build palettes I want. Because I want to start building a little more and make it look a little bit better. And I have a lot of nether brick, obviously, from the barter farm. What I don't have is red nether brick. I love the new... It's not even new anymore, but it's new to me. Red nether brick, okay? And, well, we got to go into the, the degree and shop for that because... I need nether wart. I don't have any nether wart. Where is the nether wart? Oh, he sells redstone. He's, this guy's selling everything, man. It's just like the one stop. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, what's what's his what's the rate here? One that yeah. Uh, one diamond, three stacks. Okay, diamonds acquired. Let's spend. So uh, I already forgot what it was. One diamond, three stacks. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I think let, let's do a little bit more of something, something right there. Okay, we are going to have to do something with the red nether brick situation because I need a lot more warts. We're going to have to like set up a little wart farm or something like that, but we're not done yet. I want to do some crazy more building here and I want to head down in here. We're going to try and build out. We're going to try and build out the main hall. Let's do it. Ow. Okay, well, I mean, I didn't finish it. I didn't do the ceiling, but I have it all planned out, and there's going to be some very cool, like, black giant, like, chandelier kind of things hanging from the ceiling. I'm excited about that. I didn't do the ceiling because, A, it's late and I need to sleep, and B, because, uh, red, red nether brick. I gotta get me some red nether brick. Oh, yeah, I don't have enough. Um, but the, the thing is, I have all the wart now I bought from Green. I don't have the, uh, the, the nether brick to, cra to craft it because I just turned it all into regular nether brick things. Anyways, this building looks great. I love it. We got, we, I, I kind of debated a lot here. I wanted to go red and black because I love red and blacks together. So I decided to go nether wart in the middle here and the, the crimson funkinator stuff, whatever it is over there. And then I carried it up there as well. And like I said, the ceiling will be uh, red nether brick and stuff. Like in it, the, uh, there's like a little soul flame on top of each one of these. I think what I'm going to do is extinguish each of those and then as people claim them, I will light them up or tell them to light them up. That way, you'll know which ones are in use just by seeing which ones are lit up. And I think what I'm going to also do is get a hermit's head from Zombie Cleo for each one. And like right there, we'll put a uh, the hermit that owns this scoreboard. I think that'll look really good here. Um, added a little light in the middle here. A little swoopy. Hey, you stupid travel. Add a little thing in the corner there. I don't like that. I'm going to have to fix that and that. But other than that, the room's looking good. Mirrored on the other side, of course, as well. And then the entrance here. I actually, I actually really like it. I finally found a use for stupid glazed terracotta. This is like the block. You guys know me. This is the block I hate most in the game. I decided to give it a whirl, and I think it fits with the red and the black build in here. But the big star of the show here is that. And you probably can guess what's going to go up there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I am going to get another Ravager and put it up there as a greeting so the entrance is like right here okay and i'll probably next episode or even before then i'll have this whole entrance done and everything um but the entrance is here and there's gonna be a ravager right up there just staring you in the face and i think that just sets the mood of this whole place right away the time has come for us to depart ladies and gentlemen please try not to shed a tear i will be back shortly with more work on decked out i cannot wait to keep cranking away in this game. I'm, I'm itching to get to the redstone. I mean, I think we're ready to get to the redstone at this point. Uh, but I also really got to get back to the gaming district with Etho. There's so much to do there. 
Lots to be done. Lots to be done. Thank you so much for watching, guys. You're the best. I will see you next time.